Hello, my name is Teresa and I'm your early childhood trainer and assessor and today we're going to look at CHC ECEO 23 Analyze Information to Inform Learning. Now this is a very important um, unit in your diploma course and it's really really important that you really read all the information that is given to you because when you do your placement half of your placement folder is based around this unit so what I need you to do is yes you need to do the assignment but I need you to also read all the other resources which I'll show you soon and this unit really does you really do need to use the textbook for Okay, first off, I'm going to go into the assignment and explain some questions to you. Now, from um, assignment one all the way down to question um, assignment two, case study one, all of that information is in your PowerPoint right here. Okay, so you just need to click on the PowerPoint. Um, I should have it up here, download it, and all your assessment questions are in here, okay? So this has been updated, and everything that you need is in here. Now, you must read the whole 64 slides because you will not be able to answer all the questions, but everything is in here, okay? Now, don't forget to reference your assignment too, by the way. Um, okay, so when we go to case study, um, oops, sorry, I'm just going to make that a bit, there we go. So when we go to case study one in assessment two, what you must do is you must read the following um, documentation samples below. So we're going to look at different types of observations. Now, I cannot stress enough to you that you must understand observations, especially being a diploma student because when you graduate and you start working in early childhood, you have to observe children daily. So you have to have an understanding. Otherwise, you'll not be able to fulfill your job requirements. And also, not only that, you won't be able to um, do your placement book correctly and you'll have to resubmit it. So what you have to do is you must read this whole um, documentation on the narrative assessment on the preschool music makers, the observation here. And then you've got here another type of um, observation sample which is called child's voice. And then you've got your um, planning web here and this is about making sound. So once you read all that information, you have to come down to um, this question here. So based on the document samples, provide an interpretation of your of the experience and of the children involved, including the relevant information in the table below. So you must answer in here. Interpret the document samples, okay? So when you're talking about interpreting the document samples, you need to look at the following things. Now, like I said, you must read the questions thoroughly so you um, have an understanding. Now, the things that you're going to be looking for is like um, the difference between like the socialing to, that happened, um, the social skills of the children. Um, also have a look at like how they demonstrate um, with peers, like working with other children. Um, also have a look at how the children explore the music concepts such as sound, pitch, tones and things like that. So this is where you give me all this information. So you need to read all of this and analyse what the children have kind of learnt. And this is where you put it in here, interpretation of documents, okay? So you have to tell me like, you know, how were they involved, what did they learn and things like that. So it goes in here. Now, question number two, based on the narrative, the music preschool makers, which is this scenario here, okay? Sorry, scroll back down. Um, and the child's voice, which is this scenario here, and the making sounds, which is this scenario here. Um, tell me what you would do for a follow-up experience for the children. So that means... 
A follow-up means what other activities will you plan for them to continue their learning, okay? So obviously they're interested in music. So what would you give me, okay? So when you're answering that question, what you were meant to do is you were meant to tell me things like this, okay? Link it firstly to the early years framework. That is a must. So you have to tell me whatever learning that happened up in here where you've done your interpretation, you have to then link that to the early years framework and tell me the learning outcome here. So you might pick, I don't know, outcome four, children involved learners, walk effective communicators, outcome five. Whatever outcome you feel, you need to put it in there. Then you should also link it to the national quality standards, okay? Then you must plan me an activity and experience to extend their learning. So you must tell me the name of the activity that you're going to choose for the child and then tell me why you have picked that. For example, you might want the children to make music shakers out of Coke bottles and then you're going to tell me why so they can understand a different way to get a sound or well, something like that, okay? So that is what you um, can put in here. You must not use the examples that I'm giving you. This is just only a guide, okay? You have to do it your own because it's so important that you do this. If you struggle to find activities, please, um, a great site to use is Pinterest. You can have a look at activities on there. Okay, Assess assessment three, research activity one. All of this information is in the PowerPoint, so I'm just going to scroll back to down to case study two. Now again in case study two you must read and interpret the observation about the cake with Dylan and John T. Okay so you have to read all of this do not skip it because you will not understand the question. Okay then down here it says based on the information provided which is all of this up here Write one goal to support the development of the friendship between the two children. Link the goal to the early years framework, okay? So in here, what do, you, what do you want the children to achieve? So from reading all the information above, tell me what you want them to achieve. It might be like you want them to focus more on learning um, together um, in regards to um, friendship or extend on whatever they need to do okay and link it to the early years framework okay so this is where you write it there so give me one learning goal to support the um their development of friendship okay so it could be i don't want to give you the answer but whatever because you really need to know how to do this okay and then you have to link it to the outcomes so tell me that whatever outcome it links to down the bottom Question B, describe two experiences or um, practical strategies to support your goal of promoting shared interactions between the two children. So give me two activities that you can do with those two children, Johnny and John T. I mean, sorry, Dylan and John T. Um, so the activity must be about um, promoting sharing and interacting together, okay? So you might give them... I don't know, give them a project to do, like you might make them get to do building blocks together or something like that. But again, don't use that experience. But something that they can work together to prove to improve their friendship and their shared experience, like working together, okay? For question C, um, but don't forget, sorry, in question B, don't forget it has to be two, okay? Not one, two. For question C, provide a rationale of your experiences which reflect on your knowledge of child development and the social context of learning. Now, this is where you will need your textbooks, okay? Because you need to understand child development, all right? So you need to understand how social skills and cultural concept of child development is important, okay? Do not go cutting and pasting off the internet because you will not have an understanding at all. I would like you to read, 
read, read about child development, especially linking to social and cultural contexts of learning. I will also give you a clue. You could also go have a look at Vygotsky's learning theories. He's a child development theorist. This will also help you as well. And then you can, t in your own words, after you have read and summarized in the textbooks, you can then write it down here. I would like a really good paragraph of this so you understand, okay? Now, um, moving on to question three. Based on the information provided, write one goal for Jonty relating to expressive language development. Link the goal to ELF. So tell me what you are going to do to help improve Jonty's language development. How are you going to provide him opportunities to help him with his speech and language okay so you need to write the goal down here and then again link it to the early years framework um question b provide a rationale of your goal and and of your knowledge and then again you have to link it to the social context of learning so this is why you have to really understand this because it's question c because it repeats itself quite a lot so you have to give me, in B, you have to give me a goal for Jonty, link it to development and learning and the early years framework, and then tell me in about child development knowledge how it links for social and cultural context of learning. Question C, then you have to give me five experiences, so five activities to promote Johnny's expressive language to development. Include a rationale of your choice. So what you could do here would be like, say, um, you're going to get Jonty to do show and tell, for example. If you don't know what show and tell is, that is where the children, um, they might he might bring in a toy or something like that from home. He stands up in front of the class and he will um, talk to everybody about it and... Um, he will, yeah, express his um, talking. He'll communicate with other people. They can ask him questions. The reason for you doing that activity is to improve his language and talking in front of others. So give me five experiences like that, okay? Then describe two care strategies that can be used on a daily to promote Johnny's expressive language, okay? So, um, again, give me two reasons how you can do this daily. It could be you might get him to help you mark the class role or you might get him to, ha like, have communication, have talking to him daily or getting him to read something or do something. But you have to tell me two activities that you can do daily to promote Jonty's language, okay? Then case study three, you have to read the following. So you have to read this... Um, observation down here it goes all the way then you have to review and interpret what the learning has occurred and then down here you pretty much repeat the same thing that I talked about with the Jonty and um, Dylan scenario so again tell me the links and the goals that link to the early years um, framework for this case study up here um, give me five activities to support Millie's language and literacy skills. Please use different activities to the scenario of Jonty and Johnny, okay? It's really important that you start learning to link activities to development areas and observations. Tell me why you've chosen those experiences. So this links up to this question here. So write, tell me why you picked the five activities for C. Um, then in case study four... This is a learning web, okay? So what has happened here is the children are learning about the Australian native birds, okay? So what they've done is they've said, okay, what do we know about birds? So they've talked about kookaburras, magpies, cockatoos, um, lizards, kookaburras eat lizards, building a bird's nest, um, some birds catch fish. So this is what the child's knowledge is on here, okay? So if you go down, you have to use the web to plan three experiences that you could provide to extend the children's knowledge. Your plan should include 
um, an outline of the experience of, of what it is and how you would introduce each one. Resources required, what your role the child will play in um, to research, investigate and explore and how each experience will build on the existing child's knowledge, okay? So how I would do this is I would make um, a blank word document and I would give me, so you need to do three activities, okay? So if, I'm going to give you an example here, okay? Um, they talk about building nests, trees, branches and hollow, okay? So I'm going to do a... I'm going to make a bird feeder with the children, okay? So that's going to be one of my activities. So on a blank um, document, I'm going to put um, a group activity and we're going to make a bird feeder out of bird seed and things like that so we can find out, you know, what um, birds are in our local community at the childcare centre um, and is to even see if the children, I mean, sorry, the Birds will even eat the food and stuff like that that we've provided. So then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to answer A to D questions. So outline of the experiences. What is it and how would you introduce it to the children? So how what I would do is I would talk about, because we're learning about um, Australian native birds at the moment, we've, I have chosen this activity to um, teach the children on how to um, feed native wildlife in our childcare centre. Um, I would introduce this by the children by doing a group time first, explaining the activity and why we are going to make the bird feeder, talk about what ingredients and what birds need to eat. And then I would get to them to do this group activity with my assistance. Resources required for question B. Of course, we're going to need bird seed, um, whatever you're going to use, rope, um, how you're going to put the seed on, like sometimes you can use pineapple cones, whatever you're going to use to so it, you can attach the bird seed into the tree. What role will the children play to research, investigation and explore? So the children will play the role of creating the bird feeder, then they have to investigate it, so they, they have to watch the birds um, feed and then, then we're going to research about the birds that we have found eating the bird seed in our local Childcare centre, so we're going to explore them as well. Okay, we're going to try and find out the birds' names, activities that we can do with them, and things like that. How each experience is building on the children's existing knowledge. So the children are going to learn about native birds in their local community. They're also going to learn about what birds eat, and they're also going to learn how to care and look after for their local environment as well in our childcare setting. So that gives you a bit of understanding what you have to do. So you have to do three of these experiences okay and every time you must answer all questions between a b c and d um so that is that so far um <clears throat> what it's looking for um it gives you some idea ideas down here okay as well so that can help you um choose your activities um now, you can also use Pinterest to find out information on your three activities for this thing here. But please make sure, you know, you research these questions down here as well. Now, the last activity here, um, you have to do a research activity, okay? So, we're looking at um, other curriculums around the world. So, um, what happened is... Um, we, I have actually downloaded the early years framework for um, for you in the resources and I've also put the link to Tafataki, the New Zealand curriculum, okay? So what you need to do is in this you need to do a research. So by researching, that means you cannot cut and paste straight off the internet. You have to read the document and then write it in your own words plus you have to reference where you got your information from, Okay. So what you have to do is you have to look at how other curriculums overseas have influenced the Australian Early Years Framework. So you have to select one curriculum model in, and then you have to research in depth and prepare a presentation that can be delivered to an early um, child 
care um, staff, okay? You have to include the overall overview of the model. So that means tell me about the curriculum and what curriculum you've chosen. Tell me how that curriculum, why was it created and what is the purpose of it. Then you have to look at that curriculum's philosophy and values and tell me about that. And then you also have to look at the theoretical framework. So tell me um, from their beliefs and values, how do they have learning outcomes like the Australian curriculum? How do they incorporate that curriculum in the daily practice as well? Okay. Then you have to inform the current early years framework and how this information is used to inform learning. So how does this um, so say if you're using Tafadiki, the New Zealand curriculum, how does that um, affect like with our Australian curriculum? So tell me like how does the information is used, okay? So that, just that question there, each of these bullet points must be 100 words. So you've got one, two, three, four. So you've at least got 400 words there. Please don't write like five sentences, like five words. You have to write 100 words for each dot point here, okay? So I'm looking at 400 words alone in here. Um, you then have to reference. I've just given you an example of the referencing here. And then what you have to do, oh, there's other questions. It's not on here. You also have to um, answer the other three questions on the assignment linking to the framework. Unfortunately, it's not on my assessment here, but there are other ones and it must link to the early years framework. Now, when I was speaking um, before, sorry, I'm just bringing it up. So it is really, really important that you use everything in here, okay? So here's your PowerPoint. Um, there is the early years framework, um, the educator guide to help you. Um, here is information about um, programming and planning, which you need to know. Um, all of this will help you as well when you are doing your work placement. Now in here, I have actually, oh no, sorry, it's a wrong document. I have actually photocopied some of the sections off the um, textbook. You must, and I can't stress this enough, you must read everything on these pages here. So this talks about, you know, um, the early years framework, why we have the outcomes, and it also gives you a guide of the programming and planning, which you need to understand, okay? So I want you to read this whole chapter so you have an understanding. Um, I would really like you to read the, the um, so this is in the big um, Birth to Big School series. I would also really like you to read the human development section as well in the textbooks. Unfortunately, I couldn't um, photocopy that part because it's just too big. But you have to do that because remember in the other part of your assessment, you had to learn about, um, for your case studies, you had to learn about your um, human development. So that is all in your textbooks. I, I can't put it on here. It's just too much. So that is why all your textbooks are compulsory because you do need it for these harder assessments here um, in the diploma course. Um, there's also some more information here to help you. I will re-put the early year, I mean, the New Zealand curriculum link. I'm sorry, I did put it on the Facebook page. I haven't uploaded it on here yet. I'll do that right now. So if you need any more help with this assessment, you need to book in a training session with me. You can easily do that by contacting Apex Training College and ask to speak to Alice and she will book in a one-on-one -on -one Zoom support call and you can also email me if you need any support as well. Thank you very much and have a great day and I hope this um, has helped you. Bye.